Hi, you guys. Ginger Cook here. It's Acrylic Painting Monday, which we always do at 5.30 Central Time on Mondays. And if you want to make sure that you get notifications of that, normally you could look at Facebook, but that's been down all day. But uh, we send out an email. So if you go to acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com and sign up for our emails, then you would get a notification. Generally, John sends one out a couple hours before to remind you. We try to shoot for that. And we we, we don't do anything with your emails. We have enough to do with worrying about your emails, but <laughs> I promise you, it's it's nice to have. And oftentimes there's wonderful painting tips on our emails too. So we're, we think this is going to be fabulous. I hope everybody can hear me. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Let's give us a thumbs up, you guys. Okay. They can't have you going back to jigsaw days. Well, look, if you see some thumbs up, they obviously could hear me then, John. <laughs> Man, that's I going, can't see the that, That's up. going back in time. I'm telling you what, you know, so there you go. So, yeah, it never hurts to have a like. I tell you what, who doesn't like to be liked? I, We do, for sure. Oh, I like you, Queenie. And uh, we want to, uh, uh, if you're new to our channel, we're going to be doing a really fun pumpkin Halloween scene with the Starry Night background. I think it's going to be way cool. Wait till you see how we do it. This is really simple. The most beginner, beginner, beginner should be able to do this one. That's just why I picked it, because I sometimes it's fun to have a new decorate de decoration for Halloween and, you know, for fall. So anyway, here it is. And, you know, the thing about being an artist is, is that you can paint something for fall and paint something for spring and paint something for Christmas keep changing the paintings. Do you realize how rare that is? Most people are stuck with whatever old thing they've got to put on the walls and it stays there forever. I know my ex-mother-in-law used to take all her paintings and wrap them up like Christmas presents with fancy bows and hang them back on the wall because she didn't have a lot of artwork she could change out for the season, which isn't a terrible idea either, but a kind of fun idea. But nonetheless, as artists, you can Go ahead and paint for the season. So we're going to do that today. Um, I want to thank our moderators who have come. And while John's switching the camera down to our table, we're doing a 12 by 12 canvas. You could do it a little smaller. Um, be fine or larger, you know. But and then you see, I've got it in this cute little square frame. I'll show it where you want it done. We get these from Jerry's Artorama, these frames. And, it's very rare to find a 12 by 12 frame. That's why I wanted to show you that. We're also going to be doing a drawing for a um, for a Salvador uh, paint kit. And um, I want to thank everybody who has been sharing with me that they got their kit. Somebody just wrote us and said they got one. And, um, the, you know, when these go all over the world now. And um, this will be the, the acrylic paint, the large tubes of paint, 24 ounce tubes of paint acrylic paints not 24 ounce 24 professional colors and there. four ounces yeah this point is, four this is ounces is not reading this, 12 right? milliliters yeah there you go that's what you're getting Man. i lied sorry <laughs> and uh 12 uh and and some uh some tw high quality paint brushes are in there well, and... no not not with the big kit now you said the big kit well but i've got this one that's what i'm showing this is a, this is the little one well, you're getting the big kit then with bigger tubes than this. All right. Wait, which one are you showing? I showed this one. Can you not see it? See? I'll hold it still. Oh, that helps. Is yeah, that well, thing? your fingers were and you're removing it. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that one. Can we yeah, give we a big can, tube we'll last get time? The this is nice. And then That's you, a full kit. Yeah, full, full kit and kit. caboodle. Full kit and caboodle. That's what you get. Somebody's getting in. Also, someone's going to win the downloadable lesson, not the painting, the downloadable pass, pay, lesson for the mallard ducks we last love week we is did in the pond last it's called love in the pond and last week we did the um we did a really cute little single mallard duck it was an american mallard duck these are canadian ones mm, yeah so i shot them when we were in Canada. yeah eh? so um anyway so that we'll do we're we'll doing a drawing for that uh later um so those of you who commented on our last last tutorial on the duck we will we will be that we did last Monday. We'll be doing that. We're going to show you what's coming up. Um, one thing I want to mention is that if you're new to us, you may not know, but we do have an art school, online art school. It's self-paced. You pick the tutorials you feel like doing. 
there's no rules in that sense, but we start with beginner, one cookie, two cookie, beginner lessons. And we recommend you do some of our back to basics to get a sense of how we use paint. A lot of artists paint differently. You'll find I paint with very little water. It doesn't hurt to review some of these basics. But in any event, we, we um, uh, I, I just wanna mention that I'm gonna be using this, this is called a Stay Wet palette. And this is from last week. Yes, and it's still good. So those, I'm telling you what, I, these stay say what palettes, we've had them as, last as long as a month for us. Yep. And what I would say is, if you're hesitating about maybe joining the academy because you feel like it's not in your budget, what you would save with one of these stay what palettes would probably get you the just in not buying more paint that you haven't wasted would probably get you, you know, the best membership we have on there, you know, as far as what you, you, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, jiggle, juggling a few things. I think you'd be surprised. That really does save money, those day wet palettes. Okay, so um, here's our yellow. We painted the canvas yellow. Um, I'm going to show another tip. We haven't showed this in a while. And I want to mention, do you see how this is sort of soft here? Can you see that kind of soft? <laughs> Canvas really shrinks nicely. Hot water is better than just regular water, but if you'll spray the back of your canvas a little bit with just mist it with water, let that dry, that will tighten up your canvas. So um, that's something you may not know. It's a good idea while you do it. And, and, and if I were to dry that with a hairdryer, it would get even tighter. So I have a basic, I found this photo. We bought the rights to use it. Um, on on the internet. Here's our here's our photo. So what I'm going to do is we're going to paint kind of a version of this, but the background's going to be all different. All right. Now the traceable for this will be on our website when John. Uh, it should be up by tomorrow. By tomorrow. That's we usually put it up the next day. So I think most of you could probably freehand this in, pretty easy. But in any event, uh, we're I say that a lot out in any event. In any nonetheless, event. nonetheless. Oh, nonetheless, that's a good that's one. a good one, right? Yeah. Of that, nonetheless. Nonetheless. Um, this should be great fun. I'm going to move this down a little bit, so I'm just going to tape this down now. Uh, for those of you who are just kind of freehanding in, the fence seems to be up about um, on a 12 by 12 canvas, up about um, four inches from the bottom. Oh, okay? you're measuring it. You're not doing the finger measurement. Well, I'm going to. I'm going to go well, or if five fingers. There you go. There you go. Or you could just, we could just do a fast uh, traceable on. I've got some Sorel transfer paper. That's just so nice to have. If you don't have that, you can always use a piece of chalk. So while I'm tracing this on, John, let's give a shout out to our moderators. And a Ooh, people. let's shout out our moderators. And, and tell me who's here. Maybe we can give a shout out to some of our friends. I don't think Kim's able to watch this week because she's off cruising. But she may be watching. If she is, say hi. And, of course, uh, who else is here, John? Well, we, for the moderating department, we have the uh, four L's. We have moderator Liz C2, Lynn, Liz, and Luann. That is a lot of L's. And we have Steffi and Judy. We have full staff. I don't think Mona's with us. It's a bit late for her. She's in Sweden. The time difference there is quite... Significant, yeah. right? Someone asked what I'm sitting in. I am sitting in, it's originally designed for a game chair, but with all the editing I do, I have three monitors that surround me for the editing and production of this fine quality show. Yeah, it's really nice what um, John John has there. That, that, that chair is absolutely wonderful. And it massages. <laughs> And it goes up and down. He can go almost be upside down in it to zero gravity. My spaceship. The spaceship chair. Okay. And um, I think this is pretty. I trust myself that we can put the rest of this in. I just wanted to kind of lay out where my pumpkin was right there like that. And my. Here, let's just do a few of these lines like this. They're already evenly spaced. So why? There we go. Yes and yes. Okay, that's good enough. We don't. You don't. I'm. I'm. Prompt, I only did that so we just kind of be accurate. But you really don't need that. Now. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in a starry night sky. I think. 
but maybe we'll just paint our well no let's do something else first um <laughs> uh, let's do uh oh i'm gonna just go ahead and draw in the mouth on my pumpkin and eyes because i need them to be stay yellow Probably a good idea to make him happy. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I want to make sure I have that in there like that. Okay. All right, very There's good. One so, happy looking jack o' lantern. Well, I think he should be happy, don't you think, John? I, I think so, absolutely. He's got a little toothy there sticking down, kind of a little snaggle tooth. All right, we need that to be yellow, so we might as well keep the yellow, yeah? Protect it. We're going to protect it. So we need a small brush. Uh, this is a little ruby satin silver one quarter inch brush, and I'm just going to take some orange paint and uh, do a little uh, just kind of just just kind of put him in here like that, just so we don't lose him when we start getting carried away with our sky, which is um, interesting. Uh, there we go. So it just goes. There's there's our orange here. Oh, why it's, it's... The background is a plain yellow. Probably uh, it's a yellow just of um, Holbein is what I use. There we go. So we've got this kind of plugged in there like that. All right, so we've got him. And then we've got, let's take some um, kind of yellow. We got a, we want kind of, we've got an orange hat. So kind of, we'll just do this like that. And then up here like that. So we don't want to lose our hat. And then the bottom of it's black. So let's take a little black paint and just as long as we're here, we'll just sort of cement this in. Because this is the, he's our main focus here, a little character here. So we don't want to uh, lose him. No, definitely do not want to lose him. And he's got a little bit of a dark line up here. And oh, he's got a little black on the tip. Something like that. Here we go. Now, you know, there we go. Something like that. So he's, you feel pretty good that he's been, you know, kind of, um, kind of preserved, right? So he's a happy little jack o' lantern guy. So, all right. So now what we're going to do is start painting in Starry Night. Now this is the easy part. If you've never watched my tutorial on YouTube on Starry Night, most of it's on YouTube, but a bunch of it's on our website. So you can finish it on our website. And what I want to do is just show you a trick. We're gonna. Um, Come up here in the left hand corner come down about three fingers from here and just kind of make a circle like that and our circle is about three fingers wide and then i'm going to make a circle over here just if this was a clock imagine this is a clock and this is like six o'clock here okay so right about uh not quite three o'clock i'm going to come out and put another circle and then come over here and put a circle. Now, look, these are stars. And something I can tell you about stars is if you've ever looked at the night sky, they move. <laughs> so if your stars are a little different place than my stars, they moved by the time you got into painting them. That's all right. Just do a couple on the edge here. Now, the main thing about this is right about where the little hat is. I want a big swirl. It goes in here like that. And it sort of corkscrews around. We want to say we want a big squirrel, swirl, and this, and then there's a littler one like this. This is the wind. You probably didn't realize that was the wind when you looked at him, but that's, you know, um, the Looks man like drank. The man. Come on, you guys. He drank. <laughs> and, you know, he. this is how he saw the world. And so we're going to do this. It gets kind of tapers off down toward the pumpkin. And then, um, you know, and here's the top of our fence, right? And I, I think it might be fun to make our, well, no, just leave it a fat. I won't, let's, let's leave it a flat fence, but let's make it a little bit more jaggedy. You know what I mean? Just, let's not have such a great looking fence. 
I think a fence like this needs to be less perfect, yes? Okay, and then here's our lantern coming up here like this. And I'm going to make our lantern just a bit bigger. Maybe come down like this with it. And say here's our lantern. There you go. And uh, there we go. There's, there's, there's our lantern. Okay, so far so good. All right, so we know what this is. And if you need to, right now, just take your, I think I want a, a red pencil. Just take your. Just draw a half, um, let's see, do this. Oh, that's black. That's why that kept doing that color. Wow. <laughs> I thought there was no red about that at all. All right, let me just, let me wipe that off. Really hard to get that uh, black to go red. Yeah, okay, here. We're just going to go over it with this, all right? Like that. There's your half moon right there, okay? That was easy, yes? Okay. So now let's take a let's take a little angle brush like this. This is a, a Bristolon three eighths inch. Now what we want to do, and I want to show you, this is important, <gasps> important. I want to show you the direction of the brush strokes. Let's put some arrows, right? This is going this way. This is going around this way. This is coming this way. The brush strokes are everything in this. Yeah, if you don't do these, then it's just going to look weird. This is coming this way. You get the idea, yes? And then um, these are coming up like this. And this is coming this way. Yes and yes, this way. Do you see that? If you need to make arrows coming down like that, yeah? Coming down. They're going down like this and around, okay? All right, there's our map already. You can kind of see it, right? It's the, all right, so let's, we've got some different blues here. So um, let's just start with a light blue and come on down here and using just the angle brush, just just touch the um, canvas like this. And let's chat because this is going to take a while. Um, let's just make sure we're chatting a little bit while we do this. Elizabeth would like to know what's the status of John and Ginger's nuptials. Oh, wish we knew. <laughs> Funny you should ask. I, I ask myself that too. We just have not had, we don't feel, we wanted to have some people come that we really want to share our, share our this joy. with. And um, I have not felt good about asking anybody to do anything right now because even um, though I, I feel very safe. Um, if anything happened to somebody because they came to a wedding we did, I'd feel very bad about it. So, you know, there's that, right? And um, and the le length of these is just the length of the brush. Okay? This is sort of fun, right? I mean, you can kind of get the idea of how we're doing this, right? Now, this takes a little practice because... It's not um, a normal way to paint for one. There's a lot... There's a lot of this. This is a very easy painting. It just is going to take you a little time. If you rush through it, you're not going to have a, su a successful starry night, which, of course, we want for you to have a successful starry night. Yes and yes. Absolutely. And so we definitely feel like to for you to have a, and they've got to be random. Don't put them in a row like bricks. You guys, you sock folders, make these more random, please. If you start putting them in a row like bricks, stagger them. Write the word stagger random up on your canvas when you're thinking about doing this. Because there's a part of your mind's going, I've got this. We'll put them in a row. I would certainly do that. Yeah, and you don't want to do that. And they can properly. overlap. Don't don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. And, I'd even and it use can the overlap. To make sure they're the same length. No, you don't want to, because you're going to overlap a lot of this. You. Like this. And uh, we're going to come on up here like this. John, do you still paint? I did the background. John did the background. John and has been paint. working uh, 15 hours a day on the new website. Um, he's up till four every morning. People, okay, I'm going to just start putting a little white with this now because I want to come around my want a lighter blue and I'm going to come around same blue just with a little white in it 
kind of come around my first stars like this and uh, there we go now I'm gonna put a little more white with that and come around this star so just kind of protect our little stars here and um, as long as we're doing it let's let's do our wind here let's protect our wind come around this way keep following the curve so any more questions john yes i do this is a long and involved one. Oh, i like those so listen closely all right I know that one of my biggest problems is where to put the lights and darks, but just because of the light source. But beyond that, is there a way to train the brain to see details that show shape and texture? Well, one of the things I would say is that there's a game you can buy. It's actually free and you can play it on your computer or your phone. And you find the differences. Do you remember what that game was? Maybe Liz remembers. Everybody played it a few years ago. And it's it takes all the old masters' paintings and they put two side by side, like for something from one of the museums, and they'll say find 12 differences. And I'm telling you what, I had I I'm really a couple of times I had to use a hint. But if you want to train your mind, that is one of the best that is one of the best games I know of and ways to really see that. That would be a, it's, you know. Um, I don't remember what they called that one. Um, they had a free version and they have a paid one that had a little bit more challenging pieces in it. Yeah, and they may have even upgraded it since since I know, I know the people that did uh, uh, play it, but those are, you know, you've got to challenge your brain to look. And that's one of the best ways to do it. Broken brush. Broken brush, yeah. That's okay. It. That's it. Awesome. Broken brush. If you haven't got that, it's free. And use that to do it. Another game I would suggest, you know, is because uh, uh, you, really what you're train, training your mind is to see. Uh, something I noticed years ago when Cinnamon and I were uh, painting in France was um, we got into Italy and um, even though there were a lot of roads, you know, advertising signs in Italy, uh, as, as there are in most places, you know, France had them too. <laughs> if you can't read them, you don't see them. But the nope. minute you see them, then you can read them. You read them if you can see them. And what's happened is if you're not reading the image correctly, you're not seeing it. How profound is that? I, I feel like I need to have a cup of tea or coffee I in know. the shop. Just click, click, profound, yeah. dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like right. awesome. Like awesome. Like, uh, like Ronnie, I think it was Ronnie. Ronnie says, is it all right to use modeling paste for this? Well, sure. It would be fun. You could. It, it would take a little while to dry in between layers, but you sure could. That's why we're not doing that on YouTube. And not, not doing it on YouTube. Oh, absolutely, Ronnie. That's a good idea. This would be really pretty if you did a lot of texture on it. Yeah. I think, anyway. Ginger and John, when you guys do the painting retreat, please pick a venue that holds a lot of people like a TED Talk size. I have no idea how big TED Talk size um, is. Um, I know we don't TED do talks that. are big. I, I just don't know that anybody would come. Uh, I know for the for the retreat we're doing in Canada with my daughter Cinnamon, not Canada, or not Canada in um, in um, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania next year. That one is going to we're limited to a very few people. Um, and so people interested in doing that. It was like 30, wasn't it? Yeah, I think 30 was the max. And Cinnamon, of course, her, her group is part of that 30. And so they'll just, so I, I think that, um, you'll scarf them. That, you know, you want to scarf those up if you can. If you think so, you might, you know, let us know. I think we'll have more details after the. After the first of the year. Yeah, well, no more. It's, it's the, the week we're planning on it is the week between Mother's Day in the United States 
and um it's that week right before mother's day in may is that what we tentatively said they're still um deciding on the venue so i can't tell you more about it they're um still, but still being developed it's still being developed but they've done a couple of them up there and they're very nice Hey, we'd like to thank Clarice for the donation that came in, and she set herself up on a monthly donation, and we really appreciate that, Miss Clarice, through the PayPal system. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. And we have another one come in from Sandra. Thank you, Miss Sandra. Thank you. Thank Both you, Both using Sandra. PayPal. That's the preferred method. Well, and, and yet another from Tammy. Thanks. This is going to be a great painting. Little little humor for you. I just bought a Van Gogh haunted house. I have an eerie feeling about this. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> ha, Tammy. Very cute. I have an eerie feeling. So I love funny. it. And, and you know what's funny, don't you? That's Is I'm thinking that she at for she had me going here. I thought she actually bought a Van Gogh haunted house. I'm switching <laughs> blues on you now. It's another different blue. There's the three blues in the Salvador kit. I'm and just great using. Blues. I'm switching blues on you. It was the week after Mother's Day, wasn't it? Before. Oh, before. The week before. And again, details are still being worked out. That's subject to change. Nothing's nothing's in concrete, as they say. Nor would you want it to be in concrete. But um, you know, you can still kind of reserve your spot if you want. If you want to, if you have, if you have a reserve, I think we've got two people already that have reserved their spots. Committed, as it were. Committed, right? Committed. To wanting to do it. It'll be fun because when Cinnamon's giving a class, I will not be. We, we, the way we thought we would do it is it'll be a combination of classes between Cinnamon and I. But you wouldn't miss, you wouldn't miss um, any of Cinnamon's or any of mine. You know, you wouldn't we have would to make a decision. Yeah, you wouldn't have to make a decision. You just have to decide if you had enough energy to keep painting all day. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> if we can paint all day, you can paint all day. That kind of thing, right? And um, Betty would like to know: Is your daughter Cinnamon an artist too? Uh, Betty Cinnamon is got her own channel. She's the art sherpa. And what uh, the art sherpa in person? Yeah, she's the art sherpa. She is the art sherpa. And, uh, yeah, so she does it too. So she does it too. And uh, Cinnamon goes live on Saturdays. And I think and then she does some live YouTube things too. But I think Facebook if she had things. anything, Facebook, Facebook things. But I think if she had anything going today, nothing was happening. <laughs> Do you I'm, think? I'm telling you what, it's funny. Um, you don't realize how much you use Facebook until you try to get on there to do something. And you're going, what do you mean I can't get on Facebook? What happened to it? What What are you talking about? What happened to it? You know? Yeah, my important games I couldn't get into. Yeah, I couldn't play my games. And they, they expect me to, you know, to, to click so many times. And Oh, I'll tell you a game I'm playing right now, somebody, if anybody wants to play with me. Okay? I do, I do. All right. I'm playing, I, I, I go to a, a site called pogo.com. P-O-G-O. And my handle is Texas Artist 1P for Pogo, number 1P. I, that's my handle. So if you're on Pogo and you want to friend me on Pogo, then you can see if your friends are playing. And the, play, the games I play in the wee hours of the night are, um, I play uh, Jungle, Jungle Gin, which is like gin rummy. Okay, and everybody beats me. It's really no. depressing. Well, when I help, sometimes I one. sometimes I win. Yeah, if I walk, but off. I don't. I don't stop off if I lose. All right, you know what I mean? No, you're glad for people, punishment. Okay, do it again. Do it again. Sometimes, um, you'll you know, I, you know, I have found when I played with people, and occasionally I do win. Not all the time, but occasionally I win. I mean, it's a luck of the draw. You know, literally, you're drawing for cards, and sometimes you're lucky, and sometimes you're not. So I don't take that personally and I, I i we just play friend, friendly little games it's kind of you know but um i i have discovered i like that and then uh, and then another game i play but it's not a, you know it's just something uh it's really good for your brain it's not a two-person game is 
um, uh, payday free cell, which you that's kind of a kind of a solitaire. And uh, and I play a few. And then for to answer the question about finding shapes and stuff and training your mind, I play um, a lot of the mahjong games where there's there's one where you can build a your own zoo after you get so many points and you oh, can yeah, you can that. get your animals. John and I decide which animals we want in our zoo and their habitat. And it's fun. You know, so, so somebody I think yeah, last the other day asked us what we do for fun. Sometimes in the evening I'll just do that. Um, but um, but gin rum, rummy is one of those ones where, um, you you know you play with somebody else. I'm trying to. Or think. you can play against a computer. Or oh yeah, the computer always wins though, man. Just <laughs> you want to feel like a loser, play against that computer. I'm telling you, what, and the computer does has three draws and they've got all the cards. You're going, something's very odd here. How could you have all the cards with just three, you know, three times we've shuffled the deck, right? Kind of thing. I don't think so. Right. That's just how good he is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always, occasionally the computer lets me win and then it wants to clean my, well, you won a little bit lady. We're going to clean your clock. And I'm on computer <laughs> beginner too. That's what's so sad. But for those of you who've been playing culture, I know it's just fun. The thing about it is, is because Pogo is all over the world, there's always somebody up ready to play. You know, there's just always that. So you can always get uh, somebody uh, happy to play with you on Pogo. I'm going to make this a little darker in this corner as we get down here. That would make sense. Yeah. Give you good contrast with that fence. So already it's... A, it's kind of fun, isn't it? I mean, you can see where it's um, where it's coming. Uh, so now we're going to come back up here. That's just now in my uh, kind of into my darker colors up here. This is ultramarine blue. Okay, and you see how I'm. You see how these brush strokes are. You see how they're following the curve of our stars. And uh, which is kind of nice. And there's no water on the brush. Just paint. Just paint. You're a paint purist. Now, this will, when you varnish this, this will look brighter than it does right now when you varnish it. And so remember that when you're um, thinking that your paint got a little dull on you. It will, and then you can bring it back with like a Liquitex varnish. And the trick is to follow the brush strokes. So if you just went straight across and up and down, you can get a glare. But if you if you follow the brush strokes with your varnish, then you won't get a glare. That's another little tip. We haven't told that one in a while. Some of you may have even forgotten it. See how we're starting to fill this in? You guys are getting, are you getting dizzy? Huh? I am. It's it's almost dizzying, isn't it? All right, let's try another of the light blues here. Since we were kind of out of this color here. There we go. Now remember, you overlap okay, right on top of another one. I really don't want all, too much of that yellow showing through, except in a few places. So most of that yellow. I'm sort of painting over, but it it's more sparkly if you have the yellow. But some of it showing, see? So we're starting to paint that color here. Really getting the swirling action. Yeah, we're getting the swirling action of this, of our wind here. It's a chilly wind, too. Well, and the thing is, is you know, if... Um, you, you know, you have plenty of room if you wanted to write something on the fence later. I don't believe I will, but you could write, you know, like. Pumpkins here. Pumpkins are here, or, you know. Happy Easter. You could write that, too. Gosh, John, I can always count on you for great. Can't we count on John for great <laughs> suggestions? Happy Easter. So you were starting to tell me here. I bet Jani here from Canada, she said she would be. And uh, so it's got a big hide in Lorraine and. Uh, and uh, maybe Yoshi in Israel. Who else we got here? John? Well, we have Jazz asking a question. Are you going to paint the sides on this one? 
Oh, well, um, if I did, I would probably just paint them dark blue. Because it'll because that's, good, that's good. A, it's not a gallery wrap. It'll just be framed. It'll just Between be framed. Little, little black frame, a little float, yeah. floating frame. Yeah, so I probably would, you know, here you, some You typically white. will paint the um, gallery wrap ones. So here's some white paint that's kind of mixing in with the rest of it. There we go. That. Yeah, we want a little bit of this lighter paint coming around here like this. And uh, around our stars. And for sure, I want this a little bit lighter up around here like this, or where our moon is. There we go. And what I love about stuff like this, absolutely adore it, is that um the layer this is a great painting to show you layers now notice the angle these are going in here right down here at the bottom where this these are the clouds that are coming this way see the angle of that and i'm going to put a little bit of green in there with the white make a little bit of a turquoise color make a little bit of that green and that blue and white Kind of a turquoisey blue color. Do it a little bit more. There we go. See, that's kind of a teal almost. And I put a little of that around this this one here. I used to when I did taught painting parties. We used to um, we did Starry Night a lot because anybody can do this. You know, you just need a little patience, but it's not it's not hard to do. And um, we spent quite a bit of, you know, did a little, quite a bit of that when we did painting parties. Again, it's the trick is it's all layers. So if you can get the layers down, you're in good shape. And I just put some of this turquoise next to this um uh, fence here and you'd like to say ginger i love how this is coming out thank you for teaching this technique who said that annie annie oh. de costa oh thank you annie yeah i mean people always ask about you know you know about impressionism and stuff but this people always think this is just impressionism well it isn't it's a style of painting the impressionists what they did was that they they didn't they didn't try to be photorealistic and they they went outside to see how things would look in, in, outside in the landscape. I would say that was more about what Impressionism is than anything else, is what they would do. So everybody had maybe a different technique to do it. Uh, Gauguin went and lived in the South Sea Islands and hung out with the they, natives. Oh, I forgot there should be a star right here. Well, I can fix that. Okay. Of course you can. I need a star by my lantern. so. I didn't put that in, so let me just let me just rescue my lantern here with a little bit of white. Then I'll have to make that yellow, and that will be my star for my lantern. Of course, the lantern would have <coughs> a star, wouldn't it? Because it would be on, and it would be into the sky, kind of a glow. Whatever this is, we're doing this with it around here like that. I just totally missed that. Don't know how I did. It's all well, right. You were just just chatting away, having a good old time. Well, I was, and you know, there you go. It's easy to it's easy to get get Shed confused, get get confused. And all right, so let's change blues again. Let's take a darker blue. Come on up here like this, and do another layer of dark up in this corner. What if we put one color blue on one side of the brush and another color blue on the other? What would we get? Well, just depending on how you did it. We, There we go. We'll just keep layering it in. Any other questions, John? Uh, not at this time, my queen miss. Well, one came in the other day, uh, just in, uh, just on, on on one of the questioning things. I didn't get. I answered the comments from last week. It just took me a while to get there. We had some computer issues, and um. Anyhow, the uh the question was if you're you know if those of you who are 
our, our Academy members with either a red, purple, or blue membership know that you have personal art coaching. And since we've been switching everything over to the acrylic painting with gingercook.com website, people have wanted to know if they could send in their personal art coaching uh, on that site yet and give us about another week and we'll probably have it ready right now you still have to use the other we're academy sure. site right yeah we're real close we're on final testing mode we're, and we've got to i'll tell you what what, what we wanted to do is make it so easy that once you're set up and you'll have to watch the video of how we're doing it john's found a new way to do it and um, i think it's going to be off of our site but it's going to be you're going to log in through our site to get to it and um I have a helper helping me discuss how we're going to do that. But our first tests were showing very promising. And what does this mean that it's not going to be stuck on this site and we're not going to be limited with space? But right now, all we've been getting is just eating up my entire server. Yeah. It, it, and we it, have to keep buying more drive space and it's just very cost prohibitive. Yeah. And we have, you know, it, yeah, it saves the pictures like a hundred times. And so we're, we're trying to figure out a way to, to, to make eliminate this, that. To eliminate that, right? Okay. What are the names of the three blue paints? Um, they're um, uh, primary blue. They're um, brilliant blue. <laughs> so these are blues that basically. And they're ultramarine. So really, probably what you want is ultramarine, phthalo, and maybe cerulean. Would be the three blues, yeah. and uh, to translate it, right? To translate the blues, right? Yep. Yeah, let's get some lighter colors in here. You get this a little thinner. So you just keep layering. It's, it's, uh, I love painting Starry Night because it's just the movement in it. You know, uh, do you remember the Roadrunner cartoon? You guys remember the Roadrunner cartoon? And, um, and when they had the Roadrunner take off, they go, they had a fun noise. They'd make zunk, and then and then they would put some straight lines behind him, indicating he was going fast. Because lines suggest movement, even in your painting. Action lines. They, they're action lines, and this is what you're doing here. It was way before the Roadrunner was ever seen, but this these are action lines. So, this is almost like somebody was on hallucinogenics when they. Uh, <laughs> Everything is just spinning, right? Um, when they did this, of course, you know, he, anyway, we would go into that. But yes, yes, these are like what we call action lines. And um, But this is, this is really a good study and practice and brush, brush stroke, brush technique, brush direction, layering. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you don't have all that, you're going to have a mess. Yeah. But it's uh, not hard to do. No. You just have to be aware and not and not repeat yourself, you sock folders. I know who you are. Yeah, see, so we got um there we go. Coming along nicely. So it's coming along nicely, isn't it? It's just kind of, it's it's neat and you this is a great example of how layers build. Now you can build layers up on your painting. Remember this is on a 12 by 12 canvas for those that are... Because I kind of needed that much room to really give you the feeling of this, right? I don't think I'd do any smaller than this. I think it'd be just a pain. Well, yeah, it would be a strain, wouldn't it? Now, I'm going to rinse the brush, which we haven't done this whole time. And I'm going to go into this um, bright orange color with a little yellow, I think. Okay. I don't want to say there's my moon. My orange moon. My orange moon. There we go, there's the orange moon. And now I'm gonna put a little of this color in some of this too. Just a little bit in the stars, we'll see. 
Let's get some yellow in this star. Now let's get some brighter yellows in here. This is this very nice light yellow, which is very bright on top of the CAD, this CAD yellow color. So again, we're putting the same brush strokes around the moon like that. I'm just kind of scooping this up so you can kind of see it. Just If your blue is too wet, it'll go green on you. So kind of watch that, yeah? Uh, yeah, because yellow and blue make green. So you want to um, want to watch how that's working for you. Make sure that you've dried some stuff. Okay. And we've got a little bit of this yellow in here, a little bit, just a tiny bit coming around. Just to get the action going, right? See how we get this. Oh, wow. Is that cool or what? That's in our what, right? So while that's drying, I'm going to put that brush in. I just dropped it on the floor. That's a good so place here's to your tip of the day. If you haven't got one of these nifty things, that's Go. how I'm going to print, pick the brush up, which fell on the floor. Yes and yes. Look at that. I'm telling you, it's a I white have them thing. all over the house. You know? Great. Right, so that's going in the water. Let me put this up here. Okay, I'm gonna move that frame up here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a large brush. And what I want to do is I want to just take some dark brown and this is like burnt umber. I'm going to just paint this in probably every other one. That's about right, about every other one here, okay? And then well, they don't have to be perfect. They're old, uh, old, um, old boards. Old fence. Old fence, yes. The pumpkin won't mind. Paint this in like that. Again, no water on the brush. And this is a little different than some of your other acrylic artists do on YouTube, I know. But, um, you know, we're not teaching watercolor. We're teaching kind of more of an oil painting technique. And uh, sometimes we use water and glazing and so forth. I'm not against water. And we use to rinse our brush and change colors. However, we think it's best if you um, kind of limit how much water you're using. Well, again, it goes for the effect you're going for. Ginger does more oil style. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to take that burnt sienna color and do the other fence, part of the fence, that burnt sienna color. Here we go. We got a little two tone going here. Two tone fence. Boy, you remember when they used to have two tone cars? We oh, had one. Yeah. We had an Impala, two tone Impala. And then the insurance companies really didn't really enjoy the experience of paint. Yeah, I think for that's those why those paint got, jobs. Uh, got Just, nicks from the offerings. Yeah, it's not that they couldn't do it, but they realized that they didn't want to do it anymore. But, and I think if um, if they went back to it, they'd have a pile of people that would go, yay, they're back. And maybe some people who'd never seen it going, what a great idea. And then there was a time when everybody was, um, uh, you know, painting scenes on their trucks and stuff, on their vans, airbrushing and hiring. And then again, nobody wanted to insurance companies didn't want to pay for a new paint job as i replace my ruby brushes if you could only recommend two bristol on to start with which would they be probably this uh one half and um maybe um the uh five eighths you do those before you would do any of the pointers 
yeah. you need a yeah because you can get a lot of brushes that'll be pointers yeah and i found you know some even very very there's some very cheap brushes out there that'll give you a point for a while and they don't but yeah you know when you're talking about five bucks for like 12 of them you know you well you know then you have to decide what that's about right so okay but now, all right so now i'm getting a little of this brown here just a little kind of, just a little bit kind of just sort of aging some of these a little bit like that that darker brown color and this will have to dry but i mean you can kind of see where we're going with our fence now yes <laughs> so so elizabeth is in panic mode wait so is everyone replacing the ruby satin silver 3 8 with the bristol on equivalent yes <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much, because a bristle on it just it gives you even more control. It's more springy. We, we we talked about control, and I I talked to you guys about it. You know, I gave you a hint last. Every you, one of the reasons you should belong to a free Facebook club is that I once in a while, by once a week, I'll throw up a free tip of the week, and I was showing people how bridges work, and you know that you can rest your arm on them. I don't have one handy, but maybe if John's up later, we can show you one. Oh sure. And the and the reason that bridges are so effective is because the thing is, as you get older, some people have had experiences where they don't have as steady a hand as they did when they were twenty. And it happens to people. I never today. had a steady hand, period, ever. No, John. I never can had never be a brain surgeon. No, you couldn't. But um, nonetheless, um, you know, if you're if you can brace your hand, like for instance, can you see my arm here? If I'm bracing my hand here, but under oh, on my wrist on top of my other hand, I can I can be a little more steady than if I hadn't done that. All right, if I need to, but maybe I need to be way up here when I'm doing it. So here's what a bridge does. You have to leave it there. I'm gonna leave John's going to back up and, really and, and back up. I'll show you what a bridge does. They also, you know, um, are, I mean, they're very nice for that because what they do is they. They have little feeties, see, like this, little feeties. That's a big one. That's like a, for a 24 inch. That's a 24 inch. And so you can come on up. And uh, this is dry enough. I'm going to put my little brushes back here and take some white and yellow and work on that. Here you go. You can you can come on. See how I'm resting my hand here? Now I've done a little white and yellow, and I'm coming up here on, on top of my um, moon here. So it's kind of it's a bridge over your painting, so it's, it's not a, touching your painting. Yes. And, and it gives you something to rest on. Yeah, and so particularly if you're particularly when you're now if you're on an easel, they make other devices. They're called malls, artist malls. It looks like a and pole. It, it looks like a pole, like a turkey baster, really, only longer, obviously. And you can kind of rest it because the idea of the way I showed you how I rested my wrist on my other wrist, you can do that. Okay, and that's that's what's so cool is you can absolutely do that. Now you see how I'm just this is dried a bit, so I'm just do, doing white and kind of yellow, and coming around here like this, and uh, adding another layer of color back up here. And that and that bridge works really well. I got to tell you, it's a it's a good thing to do. Here's a little bit of a lighter orange. Let's try that color. That's nice. Put a little of that light orange in the these two. Let's put a little, little light lighter orange. Let's see, I want I want a brighter orange in you. There you go. Okay. So um that's that's one of the things. And that's that's very handy. Now we if you go to a ginger cook um live dot gallery forward slash amazon that'll take you right up to our store and 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 all we've done is place marked it where it would be for you so because they sell them on amazon in different different lengths um they, there you go so let's all right so i've done that's that's what my bridge does and it's gosh it's handy you guys it's very handy all right let's come back with some more blue paint Let's just do another layer of blue. You know what's pretty in this is purple. Well, now yeah. how would I know they haven't done let's, purple let's yet. Got, let's get out some uh, red violet here. Ooh, or kind of a that's a great color. Because I, I have found that that's really pretty with the yellow, the purple color. Let me just show you what that does. 
See, I like the purple with it. Even though technically it was probably didn't have this color, but he would have used it if he'd had it. Absolutely. Because it's a neat color. Well, who wouldn't have used it? Okay, let's put it a gives little, another dimension. Let's take a little, put a little bit of light in it. See, you can, I'm telling you what, you can, you can jazz up this, this picture. There we you go. Just, you don't have to put it everywhere, but you know, it's nice. It just, it's, sometimes it's just worth, you know, doing to do that. There we go. Let's see. Come on a little bit around this star here. We'll pull some off the top of this. Can you kind of see it? And uh, maybe we'll put some down here like that underneath here. Watercolor artists use use um, probably bridges more than um, than acrylics because you can when acrylics dry you can lean your hand on it no problem right you just lean yourself right your little self right on the painting and it works just fine changing it down into a lighter blue now changing colors everything's about overlapping you guys that's the trick overlap it wow if, you, huh? if you're buying your brushes on the brush guys the brushguys.com use the Coupon code ginger cook all one word. Ginger cook all one word and save five percent. Yeah, and they're very good about that. And it does not have to be one of the brushes we recommend. It'd be anything you find on there. Yeah. If you do that. We've got to get that updated. We have to give them our new list of brushes. Yeah, we haven't even you know, they, they sold out a couple of years ago, right after, you know, the lockdown. And um we really haven't gotten in touch with the, the new owners that, that much. They still have honored the agreement we made with the other guys to g give everybody the the discount, but it probably wouldn't hurt to um, update that. Update the details. To update the details, right? That is coming along really nice. Is that for, you know? It's funny, and it just it is, isn't it? And it's just. Yeah, just inside here, just a few. There you go, just a few inside here. Got to get this a little bit of a, there you go, that's your biggest one. Okay. Now, I think I'll move the bridge. That's we demonstrated the bridge. You have, an, you have a feeling for the bridge now. Yeah, got a feeling for the bridge. We got the bridge. Now, we're going to go ahead and work on our pumpkin. And um, one of the things I have found, if you're into uh, pumpkins, oranges and stuff, this is this would be one where you might want to use a luminous orange from Holbein. You wouldn't have to. Oh, bring that to big guns. Because uh, you know, after all, this is this is a. I might just put a little yellow with it, tone it down just a bit. But look, here's the here's my bright orange little hat the here. Pumpkin on his little hat and come on that's cute isn't it and it's really bright and i want him to be um kind of brighter or he's got to be kind of two-toned i'm gonna say he's got a little bit of yellow on him let's see where's our yellow yellow is the kind of color you use up pretty fast um I want some yellow in this one right here like that. Kind of a combination yellow. He's got a little bit of this orange color right here like that coming this way. Okay, and then here he is here. Now his bright side, his light side is going to be by where the lantern is, all right? That makes sense, doesn't it? And his darker side, his shadow side, is going to be kind of where the hat is, kind of on this side maybe. Blend a little of that down. And maybe a little bit underneath here where he's sitting on the fence. 
okay, like that. And um, we'll take some bright yellow and put something right here. That's going to be his lightest side, where, um, again, the lantern is doing its little lantern-y thing. And uh, we want to take some white and uh, put it in the eyes. Those eyes a little bigger. Just using the corner of the brush. That's what's so neat about these brushes, is that we're just using the corner of the brush. Put a little yellow with it. Is there too much paint? It's all right. I'm gonna make sure I have this. I'm kind of sorry I used that that dark pencil on this because it's not covering up as well. Patricia asked, how many layers should you be doing? Well, it just depends. You always do two or three layers on anything, sometimes more, you know. You're building it up. You know, like, for instance, I know that this is the lighter side of this hat right here. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and let that sit and go ahead and paint. I think I want the lantern kind of a green-blue color. I think that would be pretty. And uh, even though in the photograph, the lantern is um, uh, is dark brown, there's not enough contrast there. So we're going to make it green like that. So we're making the standard lantern Ginger puts in all her paintings. I always like this lantern, and we just pretty much use this one. Okay. It seems to be the Ginger Cook. Uh... Ginger Cook Lantern, there you go. Now, let's take the brown paint and come up next to it. There you go. Make sure we're finishing that off. Now, while that's drying, that's pretty simple so far, right? While that's drying, I'm gonna rinse the brush and we're gonna start um, adding some texture to our, um, yeah. our, our um, I see a big a yellow drop of oxide water burns the damage. Now there. we're going to start a big drop of water here. Now we're going to hold the brush very flat, wipe it off. Just called dry brushing, you guys. See what I'm doing? Just sort of dragging it on here like that. And it's catching some of the texture on the. I'm putting it on the brush, wiping it off. And uh, let's see, let's get a little more paint here. You put it on, you wipe it off. Put it on and wipe most of it off because I want the I want some of the uh, wood grain texture to show underneath here, right? So some of this, and if you, if you hold it very flat, you're going to see the little bit of brown underneath it. Then if you want something a little bit more, you know, like a little bit more serious of an edge, you can do something like that and just actually create an edge. But, you know, you don't have to do that. You can um, just suggest some some texture on the wood, just doing this. And uh, see how we kind of made that fence more Halloween-y, right? Is that such a word as Halloween-y? Halloween? Well, Halloween-y. More Halloween-y. More halloween -y? I don't know. Absolutely. We made up a new word here today, more Halloween-y. Joyce would like to know an absorbent ground question. Can it be varnished and then painted? Yeah, that's a great question. That the thing about absorbent ground, which is so nice, is that you can, it, you know, when you're tired of it be acting like absorbent ground, just varnish it, let it dry, and then just go on painting it like normal. That's what's so cool about absorbent ground. Is yeah, if you've you, got the effect that you want, you don't want it to be absorbent ground anymore. Seal yeah. the deal. Yeah, and uh, the same thing with when you're using um, stucco. You can have it be all stuccoy and then seal it, because the thing about stucco is it keeps sucking in the stuff. So the better you know, the more you don't have that happen, the better. Do you see how I'm getting an interesting fence pattern? This is what's called layering, and um, you Dry want some layering. of the, the, the dark to sh to show underneath, and then it looks like this fence is sort of glowing at night in the way of the lantern. Let's see, we want this to be pretty bright up here. Might even pull some yellow up here. Well, that's too much paint. That's all right. We can fix that. 
Here we go. Let's pull that down. Let's put a little orange there too. Might be a little orange where that lantern is, wouldn't you think? I think there would be, you know. This might be very bright next to this lantern, right? Like this. So, you know, it's all it's all good. Our starry night stuff. We we were trying to think. Everybody said we need some more Halloween stuff. We've got so many Halloween pictures. We really do. So many videos on Halloween. And I thought, what could I do that would be a a fun? That's fun something a little different. different. And remember, because you can layer it. You can, if it starts to, I think I want a little orange. So let's take a little bit of yellow and red and make an orange. We don't want that bright one, but we could do a little bit of, a little bit more red in this um, this fence. Hey, we'd like to thank Kendra for the donation that came through the PayPal link. Thank you, Miss Kendra. Oh, Kendra, thank you so much. That's awesome. We Sean and I really appreciate that very, very much. We um, and uh, we appreciate the fact that you guys hang in here every week with us and watch. And if you're new, that you subscribe to the channel and are anxious to see what we can. Do. I'm going to put a little purple and blue in here now, and uh, bring okay. the uh, shadows. Uh, yeah, strengthen the shadows. I'll put a little red with that. Let's see. I want a little bit of just some sort of little dark down here. There we go. It's just a little bit of this purple color. One thing there you do want to those. remember before you try to varnish your absorbent ground, it's got to be fully 100% dry. Oh, it does. It's, it's not like a 24 hour deal. It's longer. Because it holds the moisture for quite a while. It does. I would give it at least three days. Yes, and yes, I, I concur. All right. So there's the. That is one good looking fence. That's a good looking fence, right? That's a good looking fence. If I was going to be a fence. Now, what we're, fence what we're missing here is some little pumpkins on the fence. So we're going to put some smaller ones here. He had baby pumpkins. There were some He's baby the kids out for Halloween. There were some baby, a couple of little small ones here sitting That's on really the fence. Nice That's a good day. We'll paint them, paint them um, white, and um, and then we had some really nice. That's supposed to unnice. We don't have anything that's not nice. But let's see what's this color here? We got that color. I want an or light orange. It's not you. What are you? Yeah, that's nice. It's a pretty nice bright orange. Okay, so this is the same kind of deal as with anything else. Um, when you want something to be lighter, like an orange over a dark blue, you almost have to... Um, Apply um, a little white first. Add a little white first, otherwise it's not going to be that. And what's this over here? These are some fall leaves. Ah. And I want them to be orange. And I want some of them growing up on top of this fence like this. Little spiny. See what we're doing there? And um, maybe curving down this way. Try to make an oval shape and then just kind of make some jagged edges here. Um, uh, we have a Tina, that's, I believe, a new member watching us. What is absorbent ground? Uh, absorbent ground is made by Golden. And if you watch what was it, the video we did on YouTube not too long ago, which one was it? Do you remember? It was, the, it was a good one. Um, well, they're all good, John, but what one was it? Um, the one we're not showing tonight. Um, uh, anyway, absorbent know. ground, you put you put it on a couple of days before you're going to paint something. You kind of put it on like you would gesso. And um, and why you want to do that is that um, uh, it allows your canvas to be like a, almost like a watercolor paper. Well, exactly like that. And then you mist it slightly, and then you paint. And everything kind of bleeds in like you're painting on a shirt. You know, it's slightly damp, and you know how it, you know how coffee will just sort of spread and wick everything. The paint will wick, and then when you don't want it to do that anymore, um, then you um, uh, 
uh, seal it. All right, so we got to have a light and a dark side to this. So let's take some of the green here on our, take a little green and a little bit of blue. And I need a light and dark side to my lantern. Okay. And uh, so this will take a little bit of, take a little yellow here. See what we can do with that. I'm just going to blend that in a little bit. The yellow rose. That was it. Yeah, the yellow rose. Yeah. Judy knows. That's a really, really neat picture. I think the yellow rose. That's a, that everybody, you know, that posted theirs on um, our Facebook uh, page, did such a great job with that. Uh, really did just beautiful with it. See, let's do a little bit of light coming around here like this, and uh, kind of make that more of a circle. Let's just exaggerate that a little bit. There we go. Kind of exaggerate that. Take a little bit more white here. Now this is dried, so when you put the white on, it's actually whiter. Now you see that. But it's because the white's had a chance to all this blue's dried. So when you go back with white, it's not mixing. So you're seeing how all that works, right? And uh, let's just keep and I want something pretty light around the pumpkin so he shows up, right? Particularly around his hat because I want him to show up. So We'll do a lighter, lighter blue right here. Then we can still do some darker blues in, but you want to right where it's touching the pumpkin, you want to create that. We want to create that swirling of the wind. Okay, so um, that little brush. That little ruby satin silver brush has gotten old, so it doesn't want to do this fine little um, brush strokes anymore. So I can look at that. I can look at I can take this little dagger brush and just see how I can change all that. So this is like a, this is a little uh, triangle brush, that, and um, you can see how you can take a little triangle. Judy gave me this, and um, well, thank Judy again. This is a uh, Judy, if you're painting this, this is, a, this is a really good brush to use for these little tiny thin lines. Because sometimes one of the things you want to write, you should write this down somewhere, you guys. You want to vary your lines. That's very important. And um, so that you don't have all the same line on, don't care what you're painting. You want to vary the shapes, you know, random shapes and vary the lines. So here we go with the white on top of that. Now we're getting that swirl going. Everybody's getting kind of dizzy looking at all that. There you go. Here we go. See, just, this is a perfect, I wouldn't have wanted to do the whole painting with this brush, but this is a great brush to do. Get your final details you know, on for, top. Um, uh, you know, for your final details on it, because you get, you get such a uh, good, uh, um you well you, you do it works really well how's that all right so let's try some lighter ones in here like this and these brush strokes are a little longer but that's okay we're still we're still indicating movement just kind of with your brush indicate some movement There we go. There's our stars. And uh, I want something very dark, which I think I, here's my ultramarine blue again. I think we lost out a little bit. And there's a couple places where I want to see some dark here. There we go. There, okay. 
I have to think that's I feel I feel like that was uh, fairly effective. Now somebody asked about the sides and here's where the sides would come in. You see how my sides are kind of yellow? If I come up here like this and just take some leftover blue paint and um, paint the sides here. Um, they won't be seen in your frame. They won't see them in the frame and this little bit of yellow that's showing out here on the edge. I just, you see how that sort of, then I'll just take this off the edge with the yellow. So that's something you could do if you wanted to just take your painting off the edge like that. You could make sure that little corner is dark. Okay. So, all right, now let's go back to work on our pumpkin. I'm pretty happy with our starry night sky. And, uh, Okay, now there's the next small brush. This is a um, three eighths. This is a one half. Let's try the three eighths. All right, so what are we looking for? We're looking for a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a rust color, and it's a, kind of one of your staples. There's a little bit of burnt sienna and maybe a little red in it. All right, so I want to have a little bit of a shadow on the pumpkin here like this toward the bottom. Put a little bit of that orange in it. And here, up here, too, under his hat. There you go. And under his nose. And let's see, let's give him a better tooth. Let's give him a nice little squared off tooth here. Okay. Now the brightest yellow I've got, probably of anything, is a cad yellow medium. It's probably one of my brightest yellows. Uh, which I thought I had out somewhere. I do. Cad yellow medium is probably your brightest yellow. So let's let's take a little bit here, put it right in the eyes. And let's do his mouth. A little bit up here on that. I'm going to do a little bit on this lantern too. Maybe widen this up a little bit right here. I think I'll straighten that line up. Okay. Now. Um, oh yeah, the nose. We didn't do the nose. Let's get that nose in there. There you go. Now we want some pure white, like right here. So it's like he's, you know how they do that in the movies where they have that something sparkle to show his, that his, it's sort of, he's sort of gleaming. So we want a little bit of white there. Maybe there too. There you go. So now he's kind of, we want him to glow. Is what our main thought is. We want him to glow. All right, so we need some um, orange pumpkins here. Yeah, this is white dry. We're pretty close to that. There's some orange pumpkins, and let's get, let's do some orange leaves now, or fall leaves, and just kind of use the angle to come up here into your leaves like that. You see what I'm doing? I'm taking the angle. I've got the paint on one side of the brush. I don't need a lot of it. And I'm just using the angle part like that to just uh, get those leaves in, get that shape in. And if I go over the white, it's all right. It'll still show, right? Those are nice orange leaves. These were some brighter ones here. And uh, maybe a little bit of gold, too. A little bit of yellow would be nice on some of these. Again, yeah, nothing is ever just one color.
And someone says, well, how do you know how to bunch to put? You can kind of layer it on. You can, this is the kind of stuff where you can almost just plop it on. You know, if it's not, you know, just make it kind of thick and plop it on. There's your leaves. <laughs> and let's do the top of the, these pumpkins, kind of a lighter yellow. But I'm just sort of, there you go, like that. There's the top of these. Here's a good okay. question for you, Queenie. A little bit of orange in here. Yes, good questions. We like good questions. I'm learning that less is more. Maybe you could teach on when to stop. Like right now, my thinking would be to do the fence and the dashes is different color in in different colors of brown and yellow. Is that a bad call? What does she want to do? I don't understand. Basically, what you did in the sky, do that to the fence. Oh no. It'd be very, very No, busy. if you look at the starry night, that's not how he painted his village at all. This is why you study the old masters. When he had his village, he didn't paint that at all like that. But, you know, it's your painting. It just, you, you have something called visual noise, and your eye has to have some place to rest. And if you had all that racket going on over the whole painting? Yeah, then you've lost the, you've lost the. the you've set. lost your viewer. They won't you've, stay long. You've lost your viewers. Absolutely. You've lost that. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably not, not, not a recommended plan. But if you do, I would like to see it. You know, I think, I think you would, um, not be happy with the results. Okay, so let's see. We want a little bit of this darker color in here like that. And uh, do something darker on the bottom of these guys. Okay. And let's see, what else could we do? Um, I do have to do a drawing yet. My, my queen, this is you need a drawing. Yeah, I, I let me let this start. We have to do some, let's just take a moment. I'm going to dry this. That would really help me. And John's going to do a drawing for our last... Uh, I'm going to draw a pig. He's going to draw... Um, a horse. No. He's going to do the drawing for those of you who entered in last week's contest. I am. All right. I'm going to dry this, all right? Okay. Not that you guys can really hear me when she does this. I used it earlier. Do I need to come over there before I do this? Can you plug it in? It's not, it's plugged in, it's not on. How can you explain it? Let me explain that to you. It's not on. It's not on the right there. Okay. All right, we've got a drawing from this lesson. I will grab the URL from this lesson, and the hashtag was duck and Salvador kick. You will do the duck first. So the winner of this is going to get the downloadable for the love is in the pond. Have 103. And doing a drawing. Sandra Long. I believe Sandy's out there somewhere. You see me? So Sandy, you have won the downloadable for Love is in the Pond. Should I show the downloadable for that? Yeah, you can do that while I'm grabbing this. You showed it, but you can put my. I showed it yeah. already, but if you came yep. in late, um, yeah, in case you don't know that, you, you get the sound on? for that. Yeah, nice. you're back on. All right, this is the tutorial we have in our academy. It's called Love in the Pond, and uh, we also have our tutorials as downloadable lessons. So you're not winning the painting, but you're winning the step-by-step -step tutorial for Love in the Pond. Okay, it's a downloadable lessons. What you're what you're getting. And it, it ties in with the duck we painted last week on Monday. 
So just use the contact us on acrylic painting with gingercook.com. Now we'll go back to the Salvador kit. Or do you need to have more drawing you do? No, I'm good. You want to show the Salvador kit? This is the Salvador paint kit with the uh, 12 brushes, high quality brushes, and uh, it's the full kit, 24 premium paints. And um, these are really in the very nice acrylics. You say I'm using them tonight. I'm several, you know, I'm also using golden titanium white and a few of the, because it's Halloween, I'm using a few of the whole bind iridescent colors, but you know, all in all, it's, this is the, we've been, this is really lovely paint. And I have to say, I think you're going to love it. When John and I travel, this is what we take with us. Yep. All right, let's go back for the drawing for the kit. And we've got, let's get the Salvador kit. It's the hashtag. Let's try to find you. There we go. 71 people on that one. And the winner of the Salvador kit is. PJ, which won last time and she donated it. So PJ, if it's okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick another. Cause he keeps buying the kits. You don't want to win them. Yeah, that's that's all right. You can just not. Bella, Bella in Canada. And I believe she's on this evening. So Bella, you are the winner of the Salvador kit. Let's bring the queen back. All right, I have gotten out some um, uh, golden open, um, or rather not open, but golden fluids. This is black, but there's also a black in the Salvador kit too. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, do another coat of black on the, on our hat here, like that. I'm just gonna, gonna make sure I have our, our hat here like that. There you go. And, um, this was sort of cute because if you looked at the at the hat, the way it was done in the photo, this is a very nice black. It's a very very black black, but not a, not a flat black. Okay, so there's our hat back here, kind of doing something like this. And this is coming down like that. So he's got very nice nifty little hat. Okay, so he's got that. That's it kind of brings him forward a little bit, right? And um, we can use the Salvador, not Salvador, but the uh, Oscar paint pens if we want to do a little bit more on the eyes. For instance, um, we've dried this now, so if we want to just do a little outline on the eyes, we can. Those Posca pens are good for a little detail work. Yeah, it's a little kind of hard to do that with the brush, but um, I think I want a little tooth coming up there too. I think you need some toothies coming up, you guys. Maybe we'll have two. Let's put another tooth up there. Don't you think? Just he needs he needs that little toothy. When that Salvador paint pen dries, I'll go ahead and put the orange there. So now, um, one of the things I can do too is that you know you can use a pen like this if you want, and um, on your leaves. Put your stem here. And um, we've got, uh, we want to put the, um, where's the little brush here? I want to put the little stems on our pumpkins up here too. Like so, let's see. I think that I think that that white's a little too translucent. Let's just do it a little bit like that. There's our little stems on those guys, and then I want to take uh, one of these brushes, wipe all the water off. This is when you're doing stuff like this. Got it's mine's been sitting in water, so I want to 
take some white paint, wipe it all off on a rag, and just come in here like this and just suggest some highlights on him like that. Okay. And uh, uh, let's get something a little wider back here. Around where our lantern is. And that pin that Ginger was using is called a Posca pin, P O S C A. And they're they're real acrylic paint pins, and they they're great because they don't dry right away unless you hit them with a hair dryer. So if you write something and you hate it, you can wipe it right off. So they're really one. they're they're great. They come in all kinds of colors. The colors that John and I find we use all the time are are um um. Uh, black and whites, pretty much the main colors we use. Black, white, and red. Yeah, so those are just, you know, for us, those are the main colors. Um, I almost feel like adding another um, Starry Night Star right there. I could do that too. Just poke one in here real quick. Get us a little yellow and One of our lighter yellows here. Okay. So, I mean, all this stuff to me, it what makes makes a painting like this so fun is because you have all these, you know, if you if you if you just study a picture of Starry Night, um, you know, I moved the normally the moon is up here on the right, and I moved it over here on the left because it balances out the pumpkin. Okay, which is why the um it, why it got moved. So let's take a little bit of the, let's do something like this and just take a little black here on this fence. Kind of drag some of this down here like that. There you go, make that fence a little darker in a couple places. Normally I don't use black, but I think um, gonna yeah, just Halloween a little, kind of calls for it. It's kind of Halloween y, so we're going to. We still have light on the fence. We're gonna do a little bit of black and same thing over here. Let's just darken this up under here. You know, you can always change your mind when you're doing acrylics, but this is sort of a, a, a nice, I think this is sort of a nice thing to do. Now, let's see. Um, what else, I think, oh, I want to let that black dry. I want to take a moment to show you guys. We just we didn't get to do a lot with our newsletter today because um well, time almost, gets away from us. Time gets away from us. Okay, there's our fun little hat. And I want to make sure he's uh up there. And let's see what else I want to do here. So I want to take some of that. I want that brighter color in my moon. Here you go. Let's take some of this bright color here. Yeah, sometimes you can just, people always ask, how do you know how much to layer? Well, sometimes you can just, you can just add a few bit drops of color here and there, and it, it can be fairly impressive. You just do a little bit. Um, you get that another layer. I just, you know, the, the, uh, people always say, how do you know when you stop on doing the layers? Well, um, Probably you know, when you get to, to if I you... feel like if it, uh, you know, I know if I feel like it's reading correctly. If I, if, when I'm looking at this, is it reading correctly? All right. Is it, is that, is, do we have that, that correct on it? I'm going to let that dry for just a minute. I'll take a moment to show you this. We're so excited with all the new tutorials that we've got. All right. And last this week we introduced way back out here it's on the way back machine here is our the queen's pumpkins and this is our newest tutorial for Halloween for the week. It's um uh, it's a really fabulous uh painting and lots of dry brushing and layers and this is in our academy for the uh, red uh, and purple members and this comes with personal art coaching and if you're looking for a really nice holiday painting. 
for um, you know something that can go clear through the end of things, clear through Thanksgiving. I think this would be it, something you could bring out every year. So we have these pumpkins, and uh, but coming up after that, people have said, um, "What what is your what are you doing next for your wave and water master class?" So that would be the. Um, this is another one where John's backing up. This is from one of our artists that lived um, over 100 years ago. It's totally done with palette knife. And it's a remake of one of our real old lessons we did like five years ago, very small. And this is on an 18 by 18 square canvas. And I really show you uh, probably one of the best palette knife tutorials I've ever done. And it is absolutely the texture on this. Can you zoom in on any part of this, John? The texture on this is fabulous. And um, this is a really, really neat picture done. So that's Wave and Water Masterclass coming up in later this month in October. We're just at the fourth. So I expect that to be released soon. And uh, good, really uh, good tutorial on that. We've got. Um, uh, for the academy, for the lineup, and look for our newsletter. It's another big one. This is called Wash Day, and it's a fall painting. And again, I think this take you, you know, I, uh, takes place uh, probably in Middle America, but could be anywhere really. Um, maybe sixty years ago, something like that. And it, we show you how to take a black and white photo, and how to paint and add color. Um, obviously we show you how to draw it on and then how to decide which colors to use and how to create a cohesive painting when you're just doing values. And I think that might have answered Janie's question. How do you know what colors to use? This is probably one you'll want to watch. How do you decide, you know, I mean, you'll notice that there's a real color scheme in here between this darker uh, purple red of the jacket and her dress and the silver on the wash tubs, which you know had to be a given, they had to have colors that would work with all that. Um, there's some real thought that went into this painting and to give the feeling of fall and the colors where the grass is dried and so forth. So this, this is a fabulous tutorial um, and we've never done anything like this. So even if you don't paint it and you're an Academy member, you really want to watch it because you'll learn a lot, right? Yes, John? Absolutely. You'll learn a lot on this one. And then we've got um, uh, I believe the wash day tutorial is four hours. The wave and water is six hours. Wave and water is a four cookie. Wash day, I think, is only three. So coming up, some of you have said, you know, I don't understand how you design paintings and so forth. This really has a lot to do with designs. I know a lot of you have liked the old barns. What's so good about this tutorial is it's part palette knife, part brush, and we show you how to take an, a painting, a, a couple of old barns, how to turn it into a painting, and the colors were nothing like this. Don't even, nothing not like this close. at all. But, you close. know how to take you know how to take this and turn it into, um, and using the colors of uh, the color palette of one of the old masters. We show you one of our old master paintings and they use these colors and we say, okay, so how could I apply that? Why are you painting all the, this artwork from these old dead guys? Anyway, because you're learning a lot. You can't tell you how much you're learning. So I can't express enough how much you're learning. So we yeah, have that. Time. And of course, after that, later on, we're well, going to have the, uh, the cat. I know we've been promising that for a long time, kind of our beautiful kitty. And there's going to be um, uh, one on how to do it in acrylics. And then in the downloadable store, we have one that is done with the golden opens, all golden open paint, not just the medium, but all golden opens. There's a couple of different ways you can paint this cat, and we show you that. So that's what's coming up, you guys, which I think is pretty cool, right? That's, so, that's your October lineup. That's your October lineup. All right. And I'd just like to you know, mention all of that, okay? Um, I think I want to dry brush um, some light on this from this lantern somewhere. Now you were going to go back and put the teeth back into orange. Is what you were oh, doing. I was going to do that too. Good thought. Just reminding you why you're letting it dry. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Why we? Um... Uh, no. No. I don't think so. 
I'm See, he to. needed those extra toothies, don't you think? He needed a few implants. There you go, baby. Oh, absolutely. He needed he's that. He's got to be able to eat all that candy he's getting. Yeah, and I want a little bit of orange up here. Some of these. Let's do a little bit of this color around here, too. You know, just a little bit of something. Let's see. Can we give another little, little layer of paint to this one? There we go. Um, uh, let's see. I think we could do a... All right. So, all right. Let's just do something on this side of the lantern here like that. Okay, let's kind of bring that more into the fore here when we kind of darken this side a little bit. Now, I think what we need to do is have a, we need to dry brush on some stuff. Somebody sent me in a personal art coaching the other day and it was a unicorn and it, the gal was kneeling down and she had light coming from through the woods on the unicorn. And this can only be done with dry brushing, you guys. It's the only way you can do this. And let me just, again show you another tip on this if you take paint like this for instance if you wanted to say this was you wanted some light you do this you just have a solid line so that is not going to work is it it just can't now you need a translucent color now luckily for us the orange the yellow in this kit the salvador kit the light yellow is very translucent let me just show you here it's it's very that's not the right one. Where's the other one? Uh, I don't think it's this one. It might be a lemon yellow. Maybe it's this one. Yeah. The lemon yellow is pretty translucent. So if I were to put the lemon yellow on a brush like this, what I would have to do would be to wipe it all off the brush like this. Now when I do it, do you see what's happened? See how you can see through the, you can see through the light? Okay. So, uh, test it on something. See what I'm doing here? Testing it on something, wiping, wiping most of it off. Comes out from this lantern. Does Ginger have black paint on her face? I might. Let me see your face, dear. Yep. Down the chin. Of course she does. Yeah. If you're going to be a good artist, if you don't have paint on you, no, you, it's dried. It's there. <laughs> oh, well. It's a new look. It's a new look. I have a question. What does Ginger think about Krylon products for sealing specifically? They're uh, good products. Krylon? Yeah, I don't know if they're designed for acrylic paint. but Yeah, they have some acrylic stuff. They have a lot of art stuff. It's good. We're not much in the spraying, though. Okay. Spray the bigger pieces. John, did Liquitex stop making the gloss medium varnish? Yes, they have gloss medium and they have gloss varnish. They've always had the gloss varnish, but they had to take the word varnish out of the gloss medium because it was not truly a varnish. And they got in trouble for that. So just look for gloss medium. It's the same stuff. See how cool that looks? Then you've I got think it's the, fantastic. Then that's the, you know, and then um, the other thing I would do is that I would put a something a little darker under the uh, the, the leaves so they look like they're. Um, Kind of, you know, just like that, a little bit darker under these leaves, right? Like that. And uh, just to give them a little bit more, you know, so you can kind of see them here. Like a shadow. Okay, so it's the same thing. There's our little leaves and you know, kind of what we're missing. What do you think we're missing, John, here? I think we're missing, still missing something. I'm trying to decide what it is. I don't know what it could be. 
I'll just put a little dark right there on that lantern right there like that. I think we're, I guess we can't put any birds. So sad. You know, you know, me and birds, but um, maybe we could do. Um, few little swirls to go with our starry night on our pumpkin right there, right? And I think um, I want to do a hook on the top of this lantern right there like that. So these black, these Posca pens are awesome for that. I don't know. That's about, that's about as far as my imagination can take me. I don't know where yours, but you could, for instance, right here, write like Happy Halloween or something if you wanted. Well, if it's been suggested, have a black cat, have a mouse, have a bat, have a crow. Yeah, you could. You I could. mean, you could you just could, go crazy with it. You could, could, but you know, you've got, um, absolutely, you could. I really How like. How about the, a shadow for the lamp itself? Um, you really don't have much behind the lamp. There's really not much behind the lamp. I guess we could do something right here. Just a little, a little something. Right here, like that, something like that. Take off the excess paint. Because, you know, you just. I don't know that the lamp has much of it. Doesn't, because of the way the light is in this picture, the lamp really doesn't have much of a shadow. You guys, it just doesn't. Um, I don't think that shadow did a thing for us. This is why we love acrylics. We're just going to take it off. Didn't even exist. Wasn't even there. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we could probably instead do something a little lighter on the on the lighter side of the lamp. Um, do something like uh, do a little, you know, a little more highlight here and here. Just have that lighter yellow highlight. Up here, like that. Where's my little brush? Well, I kind of wanted to do more of this, too. I wanted to say there was more of a highlight, but let's just do a little bit of here and here, like that. There, just even exaggerate this a little bit more. Just there. All right, I would say that we're pretty, we're in good shape there, you guys. And, um, that's going to be our Halloween uh, jack-o'-lantern picture. And, you know, could you do a little more or something? Sure. Could you have the, um, you, you know. You spend hours on it. You could spend hours, but I think this is pretty much, this is all I, all I came up with. And, you know, when you think about it, we took a, a reference photo, which just dropped on the floor. I'll get it for you in a second. And I uh, just want to show you, you can, you can learn a lot in your imagine. You know, imagination goes a long ways, doesn't it? And let me get my reference photo that just dropped on the floor. And when we started off with something like this, right? And um, Came and up with we, that. we just uh, invited Van Gogh to the party. And, uh, you know, I think that in itself is kind of fun, right? And uh, who who doesn't love Van Gogh and want to invite him, right? So there we go. Okay, you guys. That's our... Another one's in the can, as they say. Another one's in the can. And I hope everybody, you know, maybe you know, this this would be... This will be fun to do, I think, if you just want a quick little decor, de decor for Halloween. And, uh, you know, we've got our kind of a little bit like our cow one and our rooster one on the fence that we did. But uh, it's cute. And I hope you liked it. And listen, we thank everybody for subscribing to our channel, watching us. We're, uh, we're on every Monday night, 530. I want you to watch next week. Uh, we're going to you you must to, to participate in the live chat. You do need to be subscribed to the channel, but John and I will be joining you next week on the live chat as a premiere. And it will start right on time at 5.30 and we'll see <laughs> right you. Right on time. <laughs> Wait till you see what we're going to do next yeah. week because we've got it all planned out as a premiere and 
we're going to show you how to take your own photo and put it in a painting, a landscape. There is no giveaway for next week, and everything will be removed from the chat. We have not from the description. We're not, not yeah, because we're doing a premiere. We have no way to do it. Yeah. So there is no secret words and no, no nothing for next week. Thanks for asking, though. All right, we guys. Well, we'll we'll see you next week, and we'll be ready. Be ready with your questions. Bye, everyone. Bye. Well, you guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet or um, maybe you two can learn to draw that, you know, we we have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs. But I thought it would be fun as long as we were doing it to put a commercial in for ourselves. So here's the here's the commercial from me to you. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial and wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.